Bob Epson is important. All right, Brother Epson, go right ahead. Okay, thank you, Pastor. I have the, the, the benefit of uh, uh, not only doing a session on the uh, 40 days of prayer uh, uh, at the beginning of our, our fasting and prayer, but I have the benefit of closing it out. <laughs> and I want to I want to highlight a couple of areas uh, that I didn't get a chance to do uh, when I uh, when I started the uh, opening and the and introduction of the uh, the forty day fast that we were going through. And the key uh, there's there are many many verses. In the, in the scripture, I know I I mentioned some, but the, I want to mention a couple of others, and and where you can find them. I'm not going to to read them, uh, but uh, uh, you will uh, be able to look at them later. Um, but first, we just want to mention that you know when we talked about the 40 uh, 40 day fast. Um, there was something that always happened uh, that uh, contained it to that 40 days. And I'll just go over a couple of examples. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights during the flood where only Noah and his family survived. Moses was on the mountain 40 days twice with God. The Israelites spies spent 40 days going through the promised land and the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness, one year for each day. Goliath challenged the Israelites 40 days before David took him out. Uh, Elijah spent 40 days in the uh, desert after calling down the fire of God. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days after his baptism. And after his resurrection, Jesus was on earth for 40 days before he was ascended uh, to heaven. Those are some of the key milestones uh, uh, where uh, the 40 day uh, emphasis is given. <clears throat> Now, I'll just elaborate a little bit on some of those uh, uh, scriptures uh, that I highlighted, not the scriptures, but the events. Uh, God seemed to, to use 40-day periods uh, to prepare his people for what's next. And I think that applies to us as a, a church as well. Many times the 40-day experience comes out of tough situations. And many times the four day experience is tough in itself, but God always used these 40 day periods to prepare his people for what is next. The 40 days was not an end to itself. The 40 days was also, it's always a time to prepare uh, for even greater things to follow. One of the first events uh, that uh, I want to address is uh, it, it's found in Acts 1 uh, through 113. And this is the period in which uh, Jesus was crucified. And uh, 30 days later, I mean, three days later, sorry, uh, uh, Jesus was resurrected. And he emerged from the grave alive. Now that really surprised his apostles, but he appeared to them and proved to them he was alive. Jesus spent his 40 days giving his apostles further instructions. He told them they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He told them they could be his witness. He let them know that 
him leaving was not the end of the adventure, but only the beginning. Then Jesus left and went to uh, oops, and, and ascended to heaven. The apostles were left there to continue Jesus' ministry themselves. The apostles did what Jesus told them to do. Go to Jerusalem and wait. So that the story of this 40-day uh, period of the Bible, and there, uh, there's, uh, and and here is what I went. I want us to concentrate on uh, this evening. Let us concentrate on the apostles during this 40-day period. <clears throat> He spent a lot of time, they spent a lot of time with Jesus. They received his guidance from what was to come. They understood and uh, the coming time would require them uh, to be witnesses. They obeyed and waited for what Jesus has promised. The apostles uh, had an advantage over us. Uh, they had Jesus with them physically. They were able to talk with him and he asked him questions and they were able to hear him answer and talk back. But did the apostles really have an advantage over us? Jesus is still with us right now. We're still able to talk with Jesus and ask him questions Aren't we able to hear his, his voice, his answers, and, and talk back to, him, to us? I would say we can still do all the things with Jesus. And he would say that we're able to do all things through, the, through a uh, sometimes forget, forgetting way, forgotten way, I'm sorry. But the answer is our prayer. For many of us, prayer is quick, uh, and, uh, and 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 you have a want that you need. It's a one-way conversation. We tell God what we want, and then it's up to Him to come through with it. Just in case He didn't hear us, and He couldn't come through. We then go out and try to make it all happen ourselves. That's hard uh, uh, to call a prayer. That's really just dominating a conversation. What does real prayer do? What can we expect when we make prayer two ways? Prayer provides us with a personal conversation with God. Prayer provides us a way to hear back from God. So if we get, if we've got a, a proposal for you this evening, I want you to propose to you to, to, to today that you begin a an experiment. For the next 40 days, where, where I propose that we put prayer to the test. I know each of us do that, but there there's multiple types of prayer. There's you praying to the Lord. There is a corporate prayer. And there are different needs that each of us have and each of us have, um, have requests to the Lord for. We're at a unique time, though, in the life of of the church. After three years, we are established. After the, the pandemic, the two, the two years, we have found ourselves in different situations, not just us, Zion, but everyone. But God has brought us all on this wild ride. And it's, it's been fun, right? Can anybody acknowledge that? That, that 
the things that we've gone through has have been fun. Amen. <laughs> it's amazing to think back over the last uh, three and a half years of what, how it wasn't, we didn't have to do all of the things that we have been doing to work way, work ourselves way through this pandemic. But now, we're not where we are. We're not where we were and we're not where we are going to be. We're in the in the in between time between God getting us started and what he's calling us to be next. And this is more than just our church. It's it's a prayer for our community, for our nation, for our world, that we need to look at the situation that we've gone through and direct our prayers to ones that are going to assist us and we can minister and uh, to others, hoping that they will understand why God has placed us in this situation and and why he is going to bring us out through our prayers. Uh, when Jesus addressed the apostles, Jesus uh, uh, had the, the focus on, uh, particularly after his resurrection, there were a couple, maybe one apostle that didn't really get it. And that was Thomas. However, Thomas, if you if you know the story of Thomas, he was the one that when Jesus was being uh, brought to uh, the, the crucifixion, he was the one that said, let us go with him. But Jesus had walked with them for three years. He had taught them for three years. He had challenged them for three years. And how long is he going to challenge us? In the first chapter of Acts, Jesus was about to leave them. They were about to embark on the what's next time. And that's where we are today. We're, uh, we're embarking on the what's next time. What is the next steps to get us through the situation and circumstance that we, we not only we the church, but we the, the world is in. That's what is prop, uh, proposing to you uh, that when we think about our prayers, that we need to not only think about ourselves, but think about everyone that is going through this, all those that are around the world that are going through this situation. And we need to be able to remind them all of the things that Jesus told his disciples when he left, that the Holy Spirit would be given to us the Holy Spirit is the one that is going to communicate, we're communicating to, to give us answers that get will get us through different situations and circumstances which we find ourselves in. And I want to uh, go uh, do this through extensive prayer. I want you to ask to spend lots of personal time with Jesus not only on your personal, your family or, or your loved ones, but on our nation and our world. I want you to ask to spend, I want to ask you to spend uh, uh, corporate time in our church with Jesus. When we look at the need to pray, uh, we each have our own style. We each have our own needs. We have our own circumstances. But it's time to uh, not only think of ourselves and our 
families, but our our world, our church, our country, because the Lord is listening to us and he will be guiding us through this. Just like the apostles, there was much greater things to be done as Jesus left them. And just like the apostles, we will find our guidance by spending lots of time with him. It's going to take a great 40 days. <clears throat> when, a, when a 40 day prayer is, is uh, established, for a body of for a body of Christ, um, we have some things to consider. How your prayer times been? How has it been? Are you among the prayer warriors? Today, we should be thinking about all of those things that we've gone through in the last 40 days. When we think of others that have gone through the situation, uh, let's remind ourselves that he used 40 days with Noah, he used 40 days with Elijah, he used 40 days with Jesus. He used 40 days with the apostles. And he used 40 days experience with Moses, we're really getting started on our own 40 day experience following our fast. So it might be good to see how we can get this experience off to the right foot. How can we make sure we're not just going through the motions of this? What are some of the things we need to do to make sure 40 days of experience going through this period are experiences with God? What's that we hope to learn as we look at one of Moses's 40 days with God? Hmm. Moses had been through quite a bit uh, by this time. His life was really wild. He was born an Israelite, raised by the king's daughter, killed a man, and was in the run for 40 years. God called him to free the Israelites. He confronted the king. He led the Israelites out of Egypt. He had been with God and received the law from him. He'd seen the Israelites make a golden calf, beg God not to kill them. He'd ask God to let him see him earlier. Now he is on the mountain again with God. <clears throat> Before anything could happen, Moses had an experience that really, uh, with the presence of God, he had to understand who he was dealing with, he had to see, and he had, uh, he was dealing with some someone much greater than he could ever imagine. He had to come to the point where the one controlling his destination was the one controlling everything else. There were nothing more there was nothing more uh, Moses could do at the time but worship. When he understood 
who we're uh, coming to worship should be instinctive. The facts should overwhelm us. If we were not over, overwhelmed by our God, then uh, we have a serious flaw in how we're viewing, viewing our God. Worship is nothing so much taught as caught. You get caught up in the majesty of who he is and his worship. You wish you uh, you worship him with song and with words and with your life. You pour out all your emotions to the one who is the Lord. Of course, Moses, Moses had to repent. Being in the presence of God made Moses more aware of who he and his people were. The light of God exposes us. If we don't know him, we run and hide. But for those of us who know him, we stand and admit we are missed the mark. We see him as he is, and we shall we see we shall see uh, how he is going to change us. Moses prayed, talking with God. Now we get to talk to, with him. We listen to God to speak to our hearts. We feel for the movement of God's spirit. We trust he will lead us as we completely rely on him. Moses asked to be God's possession. Moses wanted nothing more that uh, for God to possess them. His greatest desire was that God would claim them and use them. He gave himself to God. This is where we want to be uh, moving towards for the rest of our 40 days of prayer. We want to desire God more than anything. We want to know him, his way, and will above all things. So we give our future to God. We move to the point where our greatest desire is what the Lord desires. We enslave ourselves to him. We give up all our dreams for his dreams. And what could it be better than to produce, pursue uh, what Jesus pursues? It goes on and on in terms of the individuals that uh, God uh, brought through their trials and tribulations. And I believe we, he will bring us through the trials and tribulations that we've had over the last two years. And he will lead us uh, to where he wants us to be as the Holy Spirit, Spirit will lead us individ individually and collectively. There are other portions of scripture that uh, we could cover, uh, but I think I want to stop right there and ask any questions of you and, and uh, what, what your view of what are we going to do over the next 40 days? Any comments? Well, one one may be we as a church be in corporate prayer and have an understanding of what corporate prayer means to us, that we are one body, the church. Let's look at uh, 
corporate, what corporate prayer would be. They know God. They know God is sovereign and the creator. They have heard of, uh, from God. They know his word. They have heard God speak through Psalms too. They know that nothing has happened that God doesn't know about. They understand who is in control. It's not the council, but it's the Lord. Because of their worship with God, could prayer, could praying be more bold? Hear their threats. You know what we're all against the Lord. What is it? Give us boldness to keep doing what got us in trouble in the first place. Give us boldness to keep talking about Jesus. Keep doing supernatural stuff in the name of Jesus. Don't stop just great things no matter what it costs us. What happens as a result of this bold corporate prayer? God shook the church. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. God answered their prayer. They were bold in their testimony. They were united in heart and mind. With that, Pastor, I'd like to end the, um, uh, the presentation and again ask again, is there a question or uh, thought that someone uh, has uh, for me. Amen. Deacon Naps. Yes. This is this is Sister Lisa. I guess I would want to understand. Um, you know, we hear we hear or we talk about being bold, and you you kind of gave some examples. But what truly does that mean to be bold? Hmm. Uh, it means that, uh, for me, it means that I'm, I'm trying to see how I can assist other people, how I can uh, be someone that they can come to and that the Lord will give me a response to help them with. Um, and uh, quite often when a deacon goes to the hospital um, and sees someone that is unconscious, uh, it's not the deacon's responsibility to walk out and say, well, I, they weren't awake. The responsibility is to pray, read scripture, and give, you know, give what, if even if they if they were awake, they would get the information, but it, it's our responsibility to, to do that. There's, and it's not just the deacon's responsibility, it's any Christian's responsibility that is going into a situation and they see a person going through something to just sit down with them to let them know about, that prayer works and our Lord and Savior will lead them through the situation uh, if we're following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does that help, Lisa? Yes. Yes, thank you. Amen. All right. Other question? Well, I, I just want to remind us that we're each, I know that we're each praying for different situations and circumstances, um, and that's good. Uh, but also ask the Holy Spirit to lead us corporately to deal with situ situations and circumstances that the Holy Spirit has given us to go towards. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. 
Amen. Well, I want to thank you for uh, tonight. And uh, again, uh, the 40 days, uh, there are, uh, there's material out there that, that will help you uh, see what you can do, uh, find a situation that you can help in, and and just make a difference in someone's life um, just by depending on what Jesus tells you to tell them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Epps. We appreciate the presentation. Uh, let's go for the Lord in prayer together. Father, we come before you uh, just anticipating, Father, the uh, the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives here at Zion and around the world, really for the whole church. Lord, that uh, as we have prepared ourselves with 40 days of, of prayer and fasting, and already, Lord, we're seeing great things, Lord, or the souls that were saved yesterday, uh, the work in the, in, the, in the outdoors, outside the church, uh, just things, Lord, that we know you're at work in our lives. And we're staying ready, Lord. We want to continually be in relationship with you, in conversation with you, uh, corporately and individually, Lord. Bless each one on the line tonight that we may go forth in strength and in boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless everybody tonight. We'll see you in the morning, 8 a.m. on the prayer line. Have a great night. All right. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Amen. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Have a blessed evening now. All right, Deacon Epps. God bless you.